we'll find out. Uh, what did my notes say? Hi, <laughs> said, everybody. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Does it work? Yeah, cool. So, yeah, uh, as you've all read on the notes, uh, um, by now I'm sure, uh, yeah, I, I, I was looking at what to talk about and I thought there's been a number of you who don't write Elixir around here um, and have often gone, what's the deal? Um, I'm not going to be able to teach all of it in a five minute talk, but there are some real basics that when you're reading the Elixir code, if you don't understand pattern matching, for example, it's probably going to be a little bit harder to read. So I thought for those of you who haven't read it before, I might give it a, a brief really top level introduction of that and then go into with statements which are a bit more interesting for those of us who have actually used it and I don't know, maybe even there might be something, I think I learned some things from Tyler so maybe your Elixir devs already know most of what I'm going to teach you but let, we'll, we'll go through to it anyway. So now I'll start with the basics of pattern matching and then we'll use it in something more complex. So pattern matching, it's it was scary for me when I didn't know function, anything about functional programming. It seemed like this thing that I wouldn't be able to wrap my head around um, but I realized pretty quickly that it, does, it isn't actually as, as complex as it sounds. It's, it's you, you take this concept of a, an equal sign, or it's not, in, the, in Elixir it's not actually an equal sign anymore, you call it a match operator, which there's subtle differences between equality and a match, which we'll find out, and you just then sort of discover whether this matches that, whether the left matches the right, whether the structure of the data is the same. Uh, and a fun fact, in Elixir, this is not the equality operator anymore, it's the match operator. Um, that's just, so people don't go, oh, it's not equality. It's not. Um, so, in there, let's take a really simple example. If you've got an animal, you've got a map that has a key of animal, has a string of tiger, and on the other side, on the left side, we can agree that it's also a map with a key of animal with a string of tiger, and that's going to be a match. Simple. Change that string. Now we've got a key of animal in a map. On one side it says monkey, one side it says tiger. Obviously that's not going to be a match. That's, that's no, no pattern match there. That's pretty simple. That's almost that's the same as an equality operator there. But when you start to look at pattern matching and where it can actually start to, to work for us, if you were to replace on the left-hand side the string with an underscore, it becomes somewhat of a wild card sort of variable. So this will actually still match. And that's kind of useful in, in itself. There's more that we can do with it, but even just taking that much, we can now start to do like conditional checks on whether patterns match. So a good example of where you might use that would be in a case statement. So if you set up a, a, a variable here as animal and make a meerkat, and we do a case statement on that variable, we check a pattern match on the left here to see if it is a meerkat, we can go, oh yeah, hell yes, meerkats, we love meerkats. Uh, but if it's anything else, if it's an underscore, if it's a, if that variable of meerkat is is something else, if it was dog or tiger or honey, well, we, we don't, they're not meerkats, but we're going home. We don't care. So, this is sort of a bit of a sort of a fundamental of what we tend to do with pattern matching. One of the things we can do is is, is sort of conditional matching and checking. Um, but where it really starts to really starts to come into its own with pattern matching is looking at assignment at the same time. So whilst this is actually a match because when we replace that underscore with a variable name, we can actually tell that the, the match on the right-hand side still does match the match on the left-hand side, and at the same time we can store the contents of that, that sort of um, variable, in this case tiger, into that um, variable. So now when we check my animal, we find that it's actually been stored out as tiger. So we end up with this magic sort of stuff that you can now do assi equality assignment to check whether something matches on each side. And at the same time, whilst you're doing that, you can extract out information. And we tend to use that a lot in Elixir. So if you're still with me, <coughs> it can go a lot deeper than that with pattern matching. Obviously, it's a big part of func functional programming theory, and you can look it up. It's really cool. All you really need to know is that some powerful wizardry that can do matching, and it can also do in our case with Elixir, it can do assignment at the same time. Some of the ways we use this, uh, in a function definition, you might say def print child details, in a normal function you could say pass in a child, and you io.puts, which is console.log, uh, uh, child.name, and you might get the child. And that's all great, until you pass it something that isn't, uh, doesn't have a dot .name property or something like that, and it's going to explode. Uh, you might not necessarily know why. You can replace that child with a pattern match. So now, 
when, when you're calling that function, it needs to match that. It needs to be a map with a key of name and it needs to have a name. And at the same time, we can extract out that name and then we can put return the name at the end of it. You can go a bit further than that. You can put above that, another line above that, that is the exact same function. This time, the name is going to be nil. So if it matches on nil, you can say, well, cool, this, this is a map with a, child, a key of a name, but it doesn't have anything in it. So we can safely say, well, this child has no name. You know nothing, John Snow. Uh, and at the end of that, underneath that, you can put underscore. So now you can say, well, cool. That's a uh, anything else. Then look, this is an invalid data structure. We don't care. This is not. This is not a child, or this is not. Then you can go further with that, and you can constrain it down. So it's not quite static typing, but it does help us to determine what's actually coming into all of our functions. Cool. Um, I wanted to blaze through that because it's pretty. When you're reading Elixir code, it's all through the code. And if you're ever looking into function definitions, you'll see there's little equal signs and, and all that sort of thing. And you go, well, what is that? So it helps to sort of understand that before we go in there. So what's with with? With is uh, a piece of uh, uh, code in Elixir, a, a, a block in Elixir that can be used to deal with a specific problem. And that's sort of essentially the pipeline sort of functions that you, when you're passing something, take some kind of data and you're doing something with it and then you're doing something else with it, and then you're doing something again with it, and then you're going to pass it on to something else at the end of the chain. And at any point in those, that pipeline, something could break, and you might want to error handle that, that breaking. Um, with statements, let us sort of handle that in a really, using pattern matching in a really interesting way. So we use it in our controllers, and we can sort of see how that works. And uh, yeah, it should I know my slides really well, as you can see. Um, cute gifts. I love cute gifts. Um, all right, so with statements, You've got to start off by reading right to left, which is backwards and doesn't make any sense to me, but it's how it is. So you have three blocks. You have a with, a do, and an else. With sets up our pipeline. The do is what you're going to do if you get to the end of it successfully, and the else is what's going to happen if we fail. So we tend to start off reading from the right to the left. We call a function with some data, and we do a pattern match on that output. So we might say maybe it's a child map with a child key of name or something like that. If that's successful, it goes on to another function. And you can use the pattern matched output that you got from that first function in there. Then you can do a third one or however many you want. You can keep stacking on extra statements in here and it will continue to parse these statements one after the other. And then if it gets to the end of it, you can call a final thing. So you could render your page. If you've successfully gotten through your pipeline of data structure stuff, you can then maybe render your output page successfully. If at any point one of these has failed, if one of these pattern matches up the top fails, it'll switch it out into the else statement. And then you can do a pattern match on what that error is. So if it can be the nil, it could be handle nil, or if it's anything else, you can just generically handle that error. That's a bit of an abstraction. So I'll go into a bit more of an actual example. This is actually a, a little bit of a modified piece from the actual kickback, uh, sorry, yeah, kickback code base, I think. Um, it might even be hub. No, this is kickback. Cool. Um, uh, it's update and activate child. Takes in a, 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 I've stripped a bit of it out, but it takes in a child ID and some new details. We start off with the children .find, find by the ID, and we tell it, all right, well, we should expect to see back a tuple with OK and the child. Cool. We've, we, we've accepted, accepted that that's happened. We now go to the update child details. We pass in the child that we just got back, and we pass in the new details. And then we look for the output of that function. And we think, OK, we're expecting to see an OK and an updated child, and so on and so forth. And if that's successful, it's going to go through to the render. And you'll see that we can pass the title. We can pass through the updated child data or anything else that we want to. So it's going to render successfully. Um, if you end up with a, uh, a failure, so if, if something happens with failure, so let's say we go through to the find, find child. We, that comes back good. Great, we've gotten through that step. Let's go to the next part, update the details. And we go, OK updated child, but it comes back with, say, error, child child not updated successfully, or something like that. The pattern match fails. Then it's going to skip, it's going to go, no, it's going to skip down to the else block. Now it's going to go one, through these error cases one by one, and it's going to try and find which of these matches, and it's going to go ahead and do whatever happens there. So that's the basics of a with statement. We and, uh, and and that's yeah that's this is basically how we can use pattern matching in much more of a 
you know, pipeline kind of a way. And for those of you who have uh, actually been doing this for a while and more of the, uh, the Elixir savvy around here, um, when I first arrived, well, when Tyler first arrived, not like, I think it was, I think it was you, Tyler, you found this little pattern that we've been putting in here, which is the ability to wrap all of the actual function calls inside of a tuple with a marker, like a RH for registration holder. And then when we pattern match it out, we also check that that also wraps around it. And then you can kind of look at this as saying, if there is an error, well, if it's an error that's got RH in it, then it's got to be to do with that first step. It's so, it was Lex? No, it was again. Sure. I thought it was you. There you go. Yeah, cool. <laughs> well, thanks, Lex. Um, someone came up with this, or maybe it was Olin. Oh, anyway, somebody came up with this, and it was very cool. We've now, it, was, it, was, it was Mitch. Mitch came up with this. Um, it, we've been using this in the last probably six months. Uh, 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 to great effect, we used to have to make little private functions that would check what types of errors and return. We had all these private functions underneath that were really annoying, but now because we can wrap these um, with statements inside the tuples there, we can much more effectively um, handle different types of errors as they come through, and the with statements just become um, a lot more clear and concise and, and cool. And uh, that's about it, I think. Yeah, that's it. <laughs>